POV, it's 2017. You're in your junior year of high school and you're questioning whether you're gonna start panhandling or popping open the OnlyFans since your grades are so dog shit that schools will pay you just to never apply there again. But as you're casually scrolling through YouTube, you find this video and you click on it without having any realization that this video will lead you down the most interesting rabbit hole in hip hop you've seen since Odd Future was around. Now, flash forward to today and the people who've made this wacky fever dream ass video are now about to break up two years after finally hitting the mainstream light. And in a way, you feel nothing. No sadness, no surprise, nothing. If anything, you'd only feel disappointment in the fact that their potential was never truly reached. And that's why I want to take this video to talk about the downfall of Brockhampton and how going mainstream single-handedly killed whatever they had left in the tank. Alright, so if you don't know who Brockhampton is, that's fine. I mean, can I really be surprised at their relevance when their last and objectively best album dropped and could barely hit 30k first week with barely any promo? I mean, for a project that took two years past their peak to come out, it's kinda disappointing to see that you couldn't even pull past young boy sales and that nigga drops about every other week. But basically, Brockhampton is a rap collective, or as Kevin likes to call it, a boy band, that consists of 13 dudes that make music for Tumblr nerds, and they've been around for a while, to be exact since 2010, with their first mixtape on streaming coming out back in 2016, was all American trash, which in all due respect sounded like fucking trash. And during their tenor, they've also had a slew of notable projects such as their Saturation Trilogy back in 2017, their experimental project Iridescence back in 2018, and their mainstream hit Ginger back in 2019 that basically peaked their entire career all thanks to that weird quirky wave niggas was on. The had y'all motherfuckers thinking that Rex Orange County was good, but in reality he's just a sex offender. But yeah, for as long as I've been following these dudes, I've seen a pretty steady yet gradual rise to stardom, desperate to then slip and fall so hard. I'm pretty sure that their career needed a life alert. And it's crazy to see because production wise, their music has gotten significantly better over time with them collaborating with ASAP Rocky, Danny Brown, and JPEG Mafia on their previous album to make an amazing collection of tracks. But unfortunately, due to the internal issues and people simply not giving a shit, they kinda fell off. Now around a year ago, Brockhampton announced this inevitable retirement, and I'm not gonna lie, I was not surprised, hence the word inevitable. I mean, let's be real right now, music groups, especially rap groups, just don't last that long in a music business. I mean, there's too many heads that are gonna wanna do their own thing, and in Brockhampton's case, one of those heads are gonna get kicked out for sexual abuse, but we're gonna save that mouse couture for later. And then add in the fact that Kevin promoted this ideal of being a boy band kinda just doesn't sit right within a hip hop scene. Not saying that it's wrong, but it's an image that people aren't really looking for in today's music. I mean, maybe if it was 2013 when One Direction was popping, they could have ran with it, but not even white girls with the dusty ass Air Forces are bumping them dudes anymore, so it's obviously not going to be that sustainable. But for what it's worth, they gained a strong cult following with their persona, seeming to be more relatable and casual in comparison to other hip hop acts in 2017. I mean, even I was closely following them back then, really being glad to be part of this low key section of hip hop that had so much potential. And then just taking a look at their music back then, it was so different, and in a way, it felt relatable, seeming like a mashup of tracks just made by a group of friends, kind of like how me and my friends used to be back in high school, except it actually sounded good. The production across the Saturation Trilogy was so fresh and fun, really taking those weird angles of Odd Future, the boom bap sound of old school hip hop, and the pop energy for the summertime that made these albums something for just about anyone to get into. And the different characters we got in the vocals really allowed these tracks to stand out, whether it was the frontman energy that Kevin dishes out with tracks like Star, or the strong lyricism from Amir that carries multiple Brockhampton tracks, or the loud abstract energy that Joba dishes out to give Kevin countless songs so much flavor, it's like I was getting a complete nostalgia trip back to the early 2010s when Odd Future was making music with the same flair that allowed them to stand out, and it's also responsible for why guys like Brockhampton even exist. And then moving forward to 2018 when they finally found some identity with Iridescence, taking this more avant-garde approach to modern hip hop using heavy bass and high energy, while also taking elements from electronic music to make some of my favorite Brockhampton songs ever, such as New Orleans, Jover, and Vivid. And at this point in their career, it truly did feel like the sky was the limit for them. Like what they dished out was some of the best experimental hip hop I've heard in a long while and they could only get better, but unfortunately I was only half right. Now flash forward to 2019, their stardom is rising and it seems that they finally hit the mainstream light. And you guys remember how I said that the quirky niggas was taking over? Yeah well that section of the hip hop community definitely did help give Brockhampton their flowers with them riding off the coattails of hype from Tyler the Creator's 5th studio album Igor and the sudden rise of dudes like Blood Orange and Rex Orange County. And when it finally became Brockhampton's time to shine, they definitely made their name 
name heard with their fifth album Ginger, which looking back at it now was horribly overrated. I mean, don't get me wrong, it has some solid tracks such as Boy Bye and If You Pray Right, but I feel like their relatability and the fun aspects from their previous albums just wasn't in this one at all. And I think it's because their fan base has become filled with so many dorks who dress like this, that trying to ride that avant-garde wave they had with Iridescence just wouldn't work anymore. Then add in the fact that Amir Van, the beloved lyricist, was kicked out because he can't keep it in his pants, it was like there wasn't any serious flair left in Brockhampton that really could have made this project any more special. Now we flash forward to today, with them prepping up for their final album drop after constant blue balling from Kevin, that honestly was starting to piss me off. And after their forgettable, yet still very good album Roadrunner, nobody really knew the direction that the group could go. I mean, as stated before, there was no hype and barely any promo around for Roadrunner in the first place, but it obviously seeming like their limelight has dwindled. And it's for a slew of reasons. For starters, COVID completely fucked up their entire business model, because I think Brockhampton's biggest aspect outside of dropping music is doing tours, and when everything is shut down due to an airborne virus fucking millions of people in the ass, there isn't going to be much touring going around. And then add in the fact that they didn't drop not a damn thing during 2020, basically tossed them outside of the mainstream circle because they had no way to ride the coattails of their hit single Sugar. So in a basic sense, they were fucked. They had nothing to do, nothing to ride on, and nobody knew what they could be planning since they practically went silent after dropping the tour. And then over time, you could see that some members were starting to get more limelight than others, especially Kevin with him basically becoming the face of the entire group, and even having his own separate management and collaborations from everyone else that basically put him one step at everyone in a race for a secure career once the group dissolves. So now here we are with 13 dudes prepping for Friday, November 18th when the family finally drops and the group is officially done for. And it's a shame because although they were basically a new age odd future, for what it's worth they still gave the Gen Z some timeless bangers and could have possibly secured careers for others aside from Kevin Abstract such as the producers Kiko, Rommel, and Jabari. And I saw that Merlin dropped a single a long while back to kickstart his solo career but if I'm being honest if that's the best he's got, he might as well hang it up. But at the end of the day, nothing good can last forever, and especially in music, boy bands will never last forever. That's why Mindless Behavior came and went like an MK Ultra experiment. And with the singles that we've got so far for the final album, I'm honestly concerned with the direction this project will go, because as of right now, all I've heard was Kevin Abstract and seeing the track list, it's only 17 songs for 35 minutes, making each song no longer than two and a half minutes tops. So uh, whatever they decide to bring to the table better be something that won't be forgotten in a month. But since people consume music, like how I consume a whole pack of Benadryl at nighttime, it more likely will. But that's just my two cents on the rise and fall of Brockhampton. We all knew it was inevitable, but it was fun while it lasted, I guess. But if you liked the video, feel free to subscribe as well, follow my IG and Twitter, and follow Chocolate on Instagram if you liked the illustrations. And on that note, I'll see you on Friday when I direct the funeral for Brockhampton's departure. Peace. Be मिनारे पाकिस्तान वाले पार्क में ये देखने के लिए कि जॉगिंग हो पाती है या नहीं हो पाती ठीक है